It looks complicated, but it isn't. It's all about one very simple idea, a cable, a patch cable that connects one circuit to another, just like these used to in old telephone exchanges, which is where modular synthesizer technology comes from. We're simply passing voltage from one circuit to another circuit, from one module to another module. This is a blag sheet. With this guide, you'll be able to go to conferences like NAM and pretend you know what you're talking about, or indeed get deep down and dirty with control voltages down at your local pub. It's free to download and print out at your place of work, or indeed you can get us to print you a nice version, put it into a cardboard tube and send it to you direct via our merch store. Before you download your free blag sheet, all we ask in return is that you subscribe to this channel. There's plenty more blags coming up. Um, we're a small startup and subscriptions on our YouTube channel mean everything to us. So I thank you in advance for that. Right, seven ages of man, seven jokes, seven magic tricks. There's basically seven different modules that you need to learn and that's it, you've got modular. And once you have modular, you have an understanding of synthesis as a whole. The first thing to understand is all of this is just simply a voltage management device. It doesn't make any sound. Even when the sound comes out of your speakers, it's not sound per se, it's a machine controlling your speakers with voltage. What we need to do is create some sound waves. And you do this with an oscillator, which creates waveforms that basically bounces your speakers in and out to create sound waves. The frequency or speed of these oscillations determine the pitch. Pitch is divided by one octave per volt. On the black sheet is a guide to these rough voltages versus the notes they're playing. The oscillator's pitch is controlled via the CV input here and attenuated with this dial here. Attenuation is simply tweaking the amount the control voltage affects the module. In this case, it would be used to fine tune the oscillator with the voltage input. The different oscillator waves are outputted here. A sine wave from this, triangle, square, and sawtooth. The black sheet describes these different waveforms in greater detail. The higher we go, the tighter the wave gets. This is about at the bottom of our hearing there. But as you can hear, it's always on. The way in which you control that signal, that oscillation, is crucial to how these things all interact. Now, let's have a look at this oscillator. Now, we've plugged that into the speakers just like we had with the other oscillator, but you'll see that it's going incredibly slowly, and this is too slow for us to hear. So if we look at this oscillator, it's actually called an LFO, which stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. Works very similar to a VCO, but just a lot slower. This dial controls the speed, whilst this CV input resets the oscillator cycle when it receives a trigger input. We'll return to triggers in a moment. Here again are the different wave formats. But remember, they're a lot slower than with a VCO. We can control the frequency and also the level it's putting out. but it's always on. Two down, five more to go. This is possibly the most complicated one. It's a sequencer. A sequencer uses a series of steps to output different levels of control voltage. This switch activates a step. This dial sets the control voltage amount for that step. This LED illustrates which step is being played and the different control voltages are being outputted here. We'll return to the sequencer in a bit, but let's see these principles at play. You'll see there's a bunch of steps here and a bunch of controls for them. So let's just go into pitch. That's pleasant, isn't it? But we can change the values. So if we have a look at this, 
you'll see that it's basically creating different voltages it's still always on. And that is because the oscillator is connected directly to the speakers. We need to put something in its way, an amplifier, or more specifically, a voltage controlled amplifier. The CV determines how the amplifier amplifies the signal. The attenuator is vital to control the behavior of the amplifier, as there is a variety of different voltage types that the amp will receive. We'll come to those in a minute. This is where the signal goes in, this gain dial sets how much the signal is boosted or indeed distorted by. Once the amplifier has done its dirty work, it spits out the signal here. So, always on. Into an amplifier, not always on. So what we need to do is tell this amplifier when to switch on and off. So we're back at the sequencer. We left it sending out different pitches to our oscillator, but also when a step is on, it will send out gate voltage. As we saw with the LFO, one form of control voltage is a continuing oscillating one that sweeps between two voltage amounts in different shapes. We've also heard control voltage in action, a continuous voltage which varies, in this case depending on the steps of the sequencer. But there is also trigger voltage from zero volts to the maximum in a quick pulse. This is used to synchronize other modules or to do stuff like resetting oscillator cycles. Then there's gate, which works the same as a trigger, but sends out a continuous on voltage for, say, the duration of your note, just like opening or shutting a gate. And then there's clock, which is a series of triggers used to synchronize other modules and keep them in time, stuff like that. With exception to the oscillating control voltage, the sequencer uses all of these voltage types in different ways. The clock in takes a flow of triggers from another module to determine how it advances through the steps. The clock out sends a flow of triggers to another module. And if the sequencer is not syncing to an external module, the tempo, or indeed the speed in which it cycles through the steps is determined by its internal clock and this dial. So we've got volts per octave, continuous voltage, of varying amounts, clock, which are just little on and offs, and then we've got our gate. So we have three that are totally on, and every three steps, one that's off. And you'll see here, continuous, and then off. Continuous, and then off. So oscillator, pitch being controlled by sequencer, into amplifier. Now the sequencer is going to command the amplifier to do something when we plug it in. But that sounds a bit clicky clicky. What we need to do is put something in its way that actually shapes the voltage, which helps make us believe that things are closer to something musical, acoustic like a piano. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this into an envelope generator. These create voltage shapes called envelopes. These shapes are triggered with a control voltage trigger input. Then the speed of these different stages of sound are controlled by attack, decay. The level the signal sustains at here, then the speed of the release here. This control voltage shape is then spat out here, completing our list of control voltage types. We'll put that in there and then what will happen is this will control the amplifier. So what we could do is we can slow the attack. We can make it. The sequencer is generating a series of different voltages or pitches for the oscillator. The oscillator in turn is fed into the amp. The sequencer trigger is also being patched into an envelope generator. And the series of envelopes are controlling the gain or volume of the amplifier. What about if I use a different style of waveform? Not a particularly attractive sounding waveform, but the fundamentals of something called subtractive synthesis is starting with a complex wave and then manipulating that. The most common way of subtracting synthesis is with filters and indeed voltage controlled filters. We have a standard cutoff frequency and resonance control, which, as with all the other voltage controlled modules, can be controlled and attenuated here. The signal goes in, gets filtered, and patched out here. After our amplifier, we're going to go into a filter and then out again. And the clue 
is in the title, voltage controlled filter. So that wiggling I was doing, we can control with anything, but I think it would be fun to do it with the LFO. Seventh and final module is both the beginning and the end. External signal can go in here with its gain controlled here and via the out into the modular rig. Once the signal has been patched through the rig, it terminates at the in patch point to be spat out into the big bad world or your speakers here. In our patch, we're not receiving any external source as we are simply going from the oscillator all the way through these different modules, ending at the VCF and then out into the IO module, which is then fed out into your speakers or ears or through the floor to your neighbors down below. So I'm sure you have questions, put them in the comments down below, but also grab that blag sheet as a thing that you can stuff in a drawer or even buy from our merch store to put on your wall um, as a just a reminder, a reference. This is not a cheap hobby. These things may seem inexpensive, two, three hundred dollars each, but as you can see, it all adds up. There are many online um, solutions and virtual versions of modular synthesis, and I do urge you to get your fingers dirty somehow, even if it is just on the internet, because it will give you more of a fundamental understanding of synthesis. Grab your blag sheet linked in the video description down below, and please, all we ask for in return is a subscription, a like, and do ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time we put one of those blag sheets up for you to download.